chip. Sorry about that. That's the problem. We're trying to educate people who are uneducated spirits. Come here, John Shannon, and give you instruction for higher education for your PhD. Preparation for a heavenly destination. Doctor T makes it even all September 19th to the 30th at 7 p.m. each night. No collections will be taken. The questions are welcome. Bring your Bible. Maybe real folks. All right, folks. Want to uh, get geared up for our tent meeting coming up. We're just, uh, this is the 1st of September, so we're just uh, uh, 18 days away, I guess. Uh, the end, the first is already, already passed, and for the most part, and so we want you to gear up for the tent meeting there by the Eden Mall. We want you, to, want you to come out and visit with us. We hope that you will bring your Bible, bring your friend, bring your pastor, bring your uh, preacher or your rabbi, whoever it may be. Bring them on out, and uh, uh, let's come and study God's word together. September the th uh, 19th through the 30th, 7 p.m. We'll also be doing television program all during the tent meeting every night <clears throat> so we'll we'll get the uh, uh, television times up for you so you can uh, know what to expect or uh, know when to turn it, tune it in but basically it's going to be every night and so we hope that you will uh, certainly come out and study the Bible with us we uh, uh, just old-fashioned preaching, old-fashioned gospel preaching this is brother John Shannon he's been here before uh, the, tent, the, the sheet sermons uh, all the scriptures on the sheet uh, you can see uh, everywhere he's going, uh, this is the PowerPoint before they had PowerPoint. And uh, he's a dynamic preacher. I think you will enjoy him. If you haven't been out to hear him at the tent, some people have said, well, I've heard John before, but haven't heard him at the tent. Well, come on out to the tent. And uh, we hope that you will come out and, and study with us. And until then, if you are in, uh, in the area and you would like to study God's Word with us, we're meeting at 250 the Boulevard there in Eden. 276-340-2653 uh, is how you can reach me. Or 336-394-5721. Or word of the Lord at gmail.com is uh, how you can reach me uh, by email. And so we want to uh, certainly uh, uh, make ourselves available to you if you'd like to study God's Word. If you're in the Martinsville area or the Danville area, 823 Starling Avenue, Brother Eugene Edwards there, 276-806-6922. Or uh, Martin, uh, Danville, you can call Mark. There's Mark and Micah's number. You can call uh, either of those numbers and, and someone will get back with you. And so we hope that you will certainly uh, <clears throat> uh, do that if you're in the area. And, of course, we want to remind you, uh, here's what does the Bible say. Religious Review comes on at 10, uh, 9, and the Religious Review comes on at 10.30 after the news on Thursday nights. And Brother Johnny Robinson will be here. Uh, doing the show live, and so uh, he's back in town, and uh, uh, be good to see him. I haven't seen him myself since uh, I don't know. It's been uh, several months, I guess. So uh, uh, <clears throat> look forward to uh, uh, religious review tonight at 10:30. So hope you will stay tuned for that as well. Uh, <clears throat> I do want to say uh, before we get going, I'm going to take these phone calls, and let's just see. What we have to do, if anybody's on the line, uh, I don't know who they are, but before I get into my lesson, I'm going to take these calls. Okay, there's one not gone. You're on uh, uh, Work from the Lord. You're on Work from the Lord. Call her. Go on once. Twice. All right. And now we've cleared the lines out. So, uh... You know, I was watching uh, the television today and uh, <clears throat> saw a lot of uh, excitement going on about the monument. 
If you've been driving through downtown Regional, you know that the monument is totally gone, completely gone. The fellow hit it a while back and broke the soldier's head off, I think, and I think it was stuck in his grill or something. I, I'm not sure it was. It mangled, it messed up the statue, and of course it was off its foundation by several feet. Uh, but today, this morning, uh, I don't really know if I can. I don't know if I can get the uh, the actual pictures up or not. Uh, but the this morning, the, uh, the the crew came through and uh, took the, uh, the 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 remainder of the statue down. I don't think I have uh, uh, any pictures of that. I have. I thought this was going to work, but let's see if I can get a. Star, Star News picture here. Uh, the they came through. I think I think Mark was saying this morning about six o'clock that uh, they came through and was taking it down. There's a picture there of the of the crane operation and um, they're taking the the monument down, <coughs> the remainder of it. And uh, you know a lot of people going on about the monument. Uh, some wishing that it was still up, some saying they should have kept it back up or put it back up, others saying they should have taken it down, and everybody seems to be in a big uh, turmoil, tizzy, about, uh, uh, about, this, about this monument. But you know, I got to thinking about it, uh, what's the big deal? And then the next thing I know, and I don't have a picture of this, the next thing I know there's something in the news about a uh, building in Danville. Some guy's restoring uh, the Coca-Cola sign painting, the Coca-Cola painting, uh, on the side of this building, and the city is saying it's a billboard, and there's, a, you know, all kinds of riffraff going on about, well, it's not legal, and it's a billboard, and you shouldn't put it up there, and it's like, everybody's worried about signs and monuments, but I wonder why they don't get upset about the real things, the things that really matter. You know, Jesus said that things in this life, they're going to uh, soon be done away with in uh, when you look at Matthew, excuse me, Matthew uh, chapter 6, Jesus said, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there you ought to be also. Now, I know, I know people are saying that maybe this monument is a treasure. They're not saying that that sign is a treasure. <clears throat> but they're all concerned about things in this life that I say you'd be better or you'd be uh, better off focusing on other things. Why don't you get all worked up and why don't you get all bothered by the things that really matter in this life? And I'm talking about the things of, of a spiritual nature, things that are not set on this earth. If you'll notice in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 2, here's what... Here's what the Apostle Paul says. He says, But if you, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above what Christ sits on the right hand of God. Now, a lot of these people that are bothered by this, they claim to be in Christ. But here's what Paul said. Paul said, Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Uh, there's a countless number of verses that talk about a greater sense of responsibility or a great sense of urgency uh, being concerned about things that pertain not in this life, but preparing yourself for the next life. And so what I'm trying to get you to see, friends, is if you really want to be upset about something, you ought to be upset about the things that concern your spiritual well-being. Like this, why don't people, why don't people get upset about something that really is important? Not worry about the sign, not worry about the monument. You know what? I, I couldn't care less about the monument. I, re I really don't care whether it stands or whether it falls or whether it's here today or gone tomorrow because that's really what it's going to be. It's going to be here today and gone tomorrow. It's going to be burned up. I don't care if it is granite or marble or whatever it is. It's going to be gone. And so there are countless number of monuments that are going to rise and fall and going to deteriorate over time. But what you ought to be concerned about, friends, is the thing that is going to endure forever, and that is your eternal soul. And so why don't you get bothered about things that really are concerning your soul? Listen to this. When we talk to, to you, friends, about the things that are going on, and we're exposing to you what people are saying, it's because we 
really love you and are really concerned about your spiritual well-being. But it seems to me that most people get upset about us because we talk about things that are in the spiritual realm. The things that are concerning the spiritual well-being of the community. But yet when things like the monument come up, that's when everybody gets all in a tizzy. They'll go out and they'll have a, a big tea party. They'll have a rally. They'll march for a candidate. They'll talk about all these things, but the things that really matter are of a spiritual nature. So why don't you really get upset about that? Listen to what this man, or what this uh, uh, caller is going to say, and let's just see if the focus is right, and why don't you get upset about things like this? Well, I'm just saying, he, he pretended to be a preacher. I ain't, a preacher. I ain't casting judgment on nobody. I just think... Well, you are, sir. You called up and said that I'm wrong. Anybody that goes to church, anybody that goes to church and worships the Lord and has faith in Him, is even even Muslims, they're brought up to believe the way they believe. But do I think God's going to cast judgment on them because they don't believe in Him and they worship some other type of God? No, I don't, because they don't know God when they're raised. Then, sir, do you I don't know. pass their judgment on them just because they never knew of the Lord. Sir, do you do you even do you believe in God? Do you have the Bible? Do you I go to church in God? I hope and be calm. You telling you you're wrong. I think do it's you, wrong. You doing it? Do you do you go to church somewhere on a regular basis? Yeah, I go to church. And what what? doctrine do you believe that teaches you that a, that a group of people who don't even believe Jesus is the Son of God, like the Muslims, are going to be saved? Because Muslims, most Muslims are raised not knowing who God is. That's beside the point, sir. Do you believe that, he, do you believe that the only way to get to heaven is through Jesus Christ? So if you grew up and, and your parents didn't teach you about God, it didn't never mention nothing to you about God. Right. You think when you die that God's going to uh, hold you accountable for that? I do. I, I don't do. think so. Well, sir, if that's the case, then why why don't we just not tell anybody about Jesus? <coughs> well, if you don't want to tell nobody about Jesus, that's you. But I tell everybody about Jesus. Now, let me stop there. See, friends, here's the dilemma that we're facing. This individual, this man is calling in. He's upset because we're talking about religions that profess to give people information concerning their soul, but he doesn't really think that people who are outside of Christ are even people who don't even believe in Jesus. He doesn't believe that they're going to be lost. He said God is not going to pass judgment on these people because they don't believe. But yet he goes around and he just said, well, I think you should talk about Jesus. Why? Why would you talk about Jesus to someone that is going to be saved, that is not going to have judgment passed on them, who has never even heard of Jesus? You see, friends, here's the dilemma. These individuals who are upset about us really don't know what they should be upset about. They should be upset about the fact that there is a religion called Islam that is teaching people contrary to the Bible. That's, that's you know, that's a, a way out there. That is a religion that everybody ought to recognize. This is something that we ought to be opposing because it is contradiction, contradicting of what the scriptures say about what to do to be saved. There is no name given under heaven, given among men, whereby we must be saved other than Christ. Acts 4 and verse 12. But he's saying, well, it doesn't really matter if they have even heard of Christ because God's not going to pass judgment on them. Now, why don't you get really upset about the fact that there are religions that are teaching something contrary to Christ? Why are you upset about uh, 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 us talking to you about what the doctrine of Christ really is? That's really what we're talking about. Let's listen to some more of what he says. So, no, you, why, why would you? Why would you? They don't have to believe it. Well, if they don't believe it, they don't believe it. But what I'm saying is, but sir, what would you, what would you tell them? Never heard of uh, they ain't even never heard of okay. God. What, what would you tell them about Jesus? 
What would you tell them about Jesus? What would I tell them? Yeah. Well, sure, we got what you're telling people. I'm, I'm, all right. So he, he wouldn't tell them what about Jesus? He wouldn't tell them they're wrong because he doesn't believe that they're really wrong or that they're really lost because if they don't believe what he believes, they're, they're not condemned anyway. You see, friends, and all this is a result of people being more upset about silly things like a, 